has it, has it. The photographic eye exists because of a mistake. Photography on YouTube has a problem. And that is that unless you do gear reviews, you really struggle to get in front of people, for people to see what it is that you offer. And that is one of the reasons why I started the photographic eye to begin with, is that I loved reading about photography, of using books like this called the, the Photographer's Eye, which are mostly just, well, they're just pictures. There's not really much to them. There's, there's certainly not how-to books, and there's certainly not, you know, processes that you can emulate. There are more images that spark a curiosity, that show you the broad spectrum of photography, and, and say to you, look, have you considered doing X, Y, and Z things? They also have within them occasionally some quotes. And there's one here by Edward Weston, who is a really great photographer. And if you'd like to see an episode on him, let me know in the comments below. And he says here, putting one's head under the focusing cloth is a thrill to pivot the camera slowly around. Watching the image change on the ground glass is a revelation. Now, anybody who's ever had the, the thrill, and I'm gonna use that word again, because it is major thrill of seeing the world represented on a ground glass, be it in a waist level finder or a four by five screen, knows how fascinating it is to see the world like a camera does. And that's what I wanted to inspire in people. It's the, the thrill of photography beyond the technical processes, beyond the gear, beyond the basics. To say to other photographers, other people who are interested in this still image, look, these are people, maybe you've not heard of them, check them out. I, I, you, you may like them, you may go, oh, that's rubbish, Alex, what the hell are you talking about, right? But at least you're looking, at least you're getting a richer experience in photography. And that's why I wanted to start this channel. But that's the real issue, which I wasn't aware of, is that because YouTube is the way it is, that's why there are so many gear channels. Because people search for that stuff specifically. The sort of content that the photographic eye and other channels of you know, similar nature operate. We have to make a name for ourselves in what's called browse. So these are videos that come up on your screen and on the home page that you haven't, you know, subscribed to, but YouTube thinks you may enjoy watching. And to get you to watch the videos, they need to be something that you kind of go, I, oh, I am interested in that. If I show you a title, that just says, Ezra Stoller, architect photographer. It's unlikely, unless you know who Ezra Stoller is, or you're having a burning desire to know about architectural photography, that you're not gonna watch it. And if you don't watch it, then the channel eventually just withers and dies. Not least because the creator gives up making the content because nobody's watching it, but then also if YouTube goes and nobody's watching it, they don't push subsequent videos. So we have to walk a very fine line between titles and thumbnails that encourage people to watch the video, spark their curiosity somehow, but then also sensationalist kind of things. Now recently, you know, I've been accused, mostly fairly, of, of having some sort of sensationalist, <laughs> let's go, overexcited titles. And that's because I'm trying to find the balance of, of encouraging people to, to look at photography in a different light, of discovering things, of channeling into that feeling that I get from, you know, looking at, at books like this, of watching videos like The Genius of Photography, the, the BBC documentary that used to be on a few years ago. And if I can find it for American people, I will link to it. In the, copy, in the description box below, because it is, it is outstanding. And of course, the Americans, not to be outdone, also have the PBS 
series from I think like the 1970s somewhere around there so people like you know so Edward Steichen and stuff you know the greats and 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 what a privilege it is to listen to photographers talk for them to share their interests and that's why I wanted to make videos like this is because it is so rare to find videos about photographers talking about explaining their craft not in a how-to way but in a gutsy sort of instinctual sort of way. So because at the time Ted Forbes was kind of the only person really doing videos about the, the greats of photography or people who photographers I found interesting, I thought, okay, well, that's something I might want to do, you know, kind of cool. Cause I, he was the only person I could find at the time. Other things were maybe just these blank, screens of images being paraded back and forth without any sort of real discussion about the photographer. And I wanted to be entertained. I wanted to find out something new, to sit down rather than with a book. And, you know, and some of the, the autobiographies or biographies rather can be a little bit academic and very weighty. But just to kind of go, that's enjoyable. What a lovely way of spending half an hour, 45 minutes, just looking at, at wonderful photographs and, and finding out a bit more about photography. And there wasn't really any content around. There was nothing that was, well, that I felt was, was interesting. So I scrabbled around and went, okay, well, I'm gonna, what should I call the channel? This is almost like my origin story. So I kind of looked about in all my books and wrote down some names and decided that Alex Kilby talks photography. He sounded a bit dry and dull, right? And I didn't really want my name at the time attached to it um, in case it was a massive failure. No, I didn't, I didn't say that, right? And then I turned to that, that book that we keep showing up on the screen here, The Photographer's Eye. And as a long time viewers of the channel may know, I have a tendency to misspell things and misremember things and mispronounce things. So when I went down to write the name for the channel in the little name box on YouTube, I wrote instead of the photographer's eye, the photographic eye, TPE. <laughs> and, and here we are today. So how's it, how's it, right? And it was wonderful to sit and realize that there are people like yourself who absolutely love talking about photography, who don't know half the people who I'm talking about most of the time. And that's hardly surprising. I mean, you know, a lot of photographers have just a passing, you know, sort of knowledge of a great many of, of the people who've gone from the past because, well, why would you, right? It's not a failing. It's, because there isn't anybody, or up until fairly recently, where I'm glad to say that more and more channels have surfaced talking about photography in a way that not only is interesting and engaging, but also they understand how to play the game of YouTube, of getting people to see the photographs, because that's very important. But, you know, we're building up a library of interesting, thought-provoking content that I hope encourages you to discover so much of the richness in the history and the future of photography. I'm here on my couch in the lounge in, in England, you know, and I don't create the, the cinematic videos of lots of the landscape photographers. We've got this wonderful B-roll and the music and all that kind of stuff. It's more homely than that. I, I, I like to think that it's more like a conversation, that we are chatting, that we are just around a fire, you know, having a just a, a natter, as, as we say here in the UK. And hopefully you come away from these, these episodes going, Wow, I'd never really thought about something like that. Or, ah, oh, I kind of, that's a light bulb moment. Or that photographer whose one picture came up on the screen. I, that person's amazing. I want to find out more about that person. And this is where I, I want to issue you almost a challenge to ask for your help because photography on YouTube needs your help that 
obviously I am one channel amongst many and no doubt you watch a number of other similar channels to this kind of content. And even if you kind of just watch a video and go, nah, that was okay, you know, it was reasonable, give the creator a thumbs up. Leave a comment saying, I enjoyed that. Now you may not think that in the grand scheme of things that matters a whole heap, right? But for lots of channels who are smaller, and, and I include myself in this, that you know, this channel, even there's 125,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowingly awesome, it's not a big channel, it's only not in YouTube terms. So we need to help other photographers who are creating content that doesn't necessarily fit into search and doesn't necessarily fall into the kind of the, the viral video sort of idea to give them as many boosts as we can. So liking a video, leaving a comment, subscribing to them. These are all signs that YouTube pick up on and go, ah, more people should be shown this, right? Because there are certain people who like it. And one of the benefits for you, of course, of doing this is that if you watch a video about Ezra Stoller or Edward Weston or somebody else or Lenny Kravitz, who T Hopper did the other day, then YouTube will look at that and go, ah, okay, so you like that content enough to give it a like and a, left a comment and, just, and watched all the way through. I am going to try and find you more content like that that I think you'll enjoy. The algorithm is not a beast to mess with you. YouTube wants to show you content that you enjoy and you can help it by saying, look, I've watched this all the way through. I like this. And you're also encouraging the content creator themselves to make more of that content. There is so much out there in the world of photography that is wonderful, that is amazing, that we have combined, everybody on YouTube have barely scratched the surface. I could make videos every single day of the week and eventually collapse in a gibbering wreck in the corner and never even make a dent in the wonderful things that we can discuss and think and enjoy in photography. I'm lucky enough that this channel gives me a financial reward that allows me to devote myself full time to creating content for you to enjoy. It means a great deal to me that you have supported me, that, that you have enjoyed watching the videos that I have made, the good, the mediocre, and sometimes the, the very bad videos. But throughout it all, we're adding to this common depository of, of knowledge. I would encourage you, if you want to do something similar, if you feel that you have an opinion, a voice or an idea or an interest within photography that you want to share with others, then do so. You never know where it's going to actually lead to you. I am so more fulfilled with photography these days because of the very action of sharing my expertise, who knows if it's expertise, right? Of my enjoyment with you. And I have to say just a huge thank you. That is, that's like the very long-winded origin story of, of the photographic eye. It is here for you and without you, then it's just me sitting in a lounge, talking to a camera, worrying about the, the F-15s ramping up their engines at Lake and Heath. Then that's a clue about where I kind of live, right? <laughs> and, you know, creating content just for the sheer pleasure of talking about photography. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and get 
loads of these videos direct to your homepage every week. I have to say thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.